let's draw the product of this reaction. Now the first thing we have to know is figure out what is this? What type of molecule is this? This CO3. Well, this is just another way I didn't mention before of writing a per acid. So this is the same as this. We could break out one of the oxygens to be up here, and then here's the other two oxygens. So we have to recognize that this is the condensed, a very condensed notation for a per acid. There's not really any need to rewrite it like this because we're not going to do the mechanism, but we need to recognize this is another notation for a per acid one oxygen with a double bond, and then here's the peroxy group. So let's show what the product would be from that. We won't bother with the mechanism. Now, theoretically, the oxygen could also attack from behind. That would really give us the same product. So we just have to worry about this one product. Now we need to show the mechanism and the product here. Well, what does this H plus stand for? Proton. Proton, which means an acid. H plus is really just a way of indicating that we've got a strong acid around. Okay. So that just indicates that we've got a strong acid. What do we think is going to happen first here then? Protonation. Protonation, that's right. We can draw that in this case just like this. Okay. And then we should show the intermediate from that. What do we expect to happen next? Um, we just created a meeting group. Mm -hmm. So let's draw what the next step would be. We should be able to draw the mechanism now for our next step. So um, who's our reactive atom here? Carbon. Which carbon? Uh, either, either one. Either of these carbons? Yeah. OK. Maybe I would focus even more on this oxygen. It's the charges that give us the reactive atoms. But anyway, what role is this carbon and this oxygen going to play? How are they going to behave? Is this oxygen, say, is this going to be positive charges can make things into electrophiles or leaving groups? So will this be a leaving group? So who's the electrophile going to be? That's right. We know that if you have a positive charge in a complete octet, it's the atom that you're connected to that will be the electrophile. So this will be our electrophilic atom. Well, then we need to find a nucleophilic atom to attack that. Well, can we see any nucleophilic atoms? In, in the water? Yeah. That's right. This is the same reaction that we were doing a second ago, sure. where we protonate the epoxide, and then the neutral oxygen attacks. So let's show the mechanism for that. How do we show a nucleophilic attack? Well, we know that we put the nucleophile at the tail of the arrow. Mm -hmm. And then we need to show the leaving group leaving. This is the standard way to show a leaving group leaving. The leaving group leaves and takes the electrons with it. Okay. And now we need to show the product from that. I'll go ahead and number these carbons. Here's our alpha carbon. Now, we know that on the number two carbon, we're going to have this OH group. On the number two carbon, we're going to have this OH group. 
Is the OH group on the number two carbon going to be on a wedge or a dash? To the OH on the number two here be on a wedge or a dash? What do the arrows tell us? The arrows really tell us what type of bond we're going to have here on the number two carbon. So one thing to notice here, well, maybe it's not quite so obvious as, as I was making it out here, but the point is that this oxygen here is on a wedge. And there's no reason for it to stop being on a wedge. Notice that there's no arrows from this bond over here. So this bond is not changing. Okay. So this is still going to be on a wedge. This oxygen is in front of the page, and there's no reason for it to stop being in front of the page. Now, what direction is this oxygen coming in? Is this oxygen, would we expect this oxygen to come in from in front or from behind? The nucleophilic oxygen. From behind. From behind. That's right. Why? Because this oxygen is blocking the front. I think we talked about that idea a second ago. In this respect, this is like an SN2. Since this leaving group oxygen is blocking the front, we expect the nucleophilic oxygen to attack from behind. So should this oxygen here end up on a wedge or a dash? A dash. dash. So now we're getting into the important stereochemistry. This oxygen is gaining electrons, so it loses its charge. And the nucleophilic oxygen is losing electrons, so it ends up with a positive charge. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen this important stereochemistry. We, had, we didn't have to worry about stereochemistry before because we were working with epoxides where we were not forming stereocenters. But both of these carbons here are stereocenters. So now we have to worry about whether things are on wedges or dashes. But the basic idea is, whatever side the epoxide oxygen is on, the nucleophile will attack from the opposite side because of stereochemics. That gives us this product here. Okay. Well, are we done, or would we expect another step? Because we have a positive charge here, we would expect another step. Because of this positive charge, we expect another step. To get rid of the positive charge, we need to deprotonate. Now, in this case, because they didn't show what type of acid we're using here, it's a little bit hard to see who's going to take the proton here. So it would be OK just to use the water now. You can use water now to take a proton. Or in fact, your instructor might just show that, that the proton is leaving. But I think it's always better to show somebody taking the proton. So we could use the water to take the proton. And let's draw what our final product would be. What's the reason that we have to do this deprotonation to get rid of this positive charge? So you want to make sure that you put that positive charge in your picture. I think you might have left that positive charge out in the picture here. That's the reason we have to do the deprotonation. That gives us these problems. Or if you wanted to, you can just write this. H3O plus is really the same as a, as a proton plus water. So you can write it in either of these two forms. As I was saying, this reaction is identical to the one we were doing a couple seconds ago. The only difference is that in this case, we were forming stereocenters. So this is the first time we had to worry about the stereochemistry. So now we're seeing what the stereochemistry is. The epoxide oxygen blocks one face, so the, nucleophilic, the nucleophile has to attack from the opposite side. So here we ended up with these two groups ending up trans to each other. Remember we said that if we have two adjacent alcohols, this is called a glycol. Mm -hmm. So now we've seen how to form a trans glycol. The lesson is that a good way to form a trans glycol is start with an alkene, use a per acid, and then attack that with acid and water. 